Hey everyone, it's Elaine Hamilton from the Reiki Center. Uh, oh, what am I going to do today? I, I've just come back from the Mind Body Spirit Festival in London, spent a day there. It's been ages since I was there and I had some interesting interactions with people because it's been a while since I've gone and it's, I don't know, I, mm, I don't know. I mean, I do think that this wellness, personal growth industry, wow. Yeah, so what am I talking about? I would like to maybe just, um, I don't know, get you thinking about what it is about these, the whole personal growth industry that we are looking for. Like, what is it we're looking for? So I'll describe an interaction I had with one gentleman who was running the stall. I mean, he was one of the volunteers there or people. I don't know. I don't know who he was, but I could see he was eyeing me up. And then he kind of was like, hey, how are you? Already, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to buy anything. And I actually said that to him. I, I was like, he was like, hey, how are you? How are you enjoying the festival? And I was like, oh, it's great. It's fine. I'm here with friends. It's like, oh, great. What are you here for? What are you looking for? And I was like, nothing. I'm just coming to look, you know, I'm just coming to, to look at what's available, have a look at some crystals, you know, maybe buy a outfit. I don't know what I was looking for. But I was with friends who were quite new on their uh journey if you like their spiritual journey whatever the hell that means and so they were booking in for psychics and aura readings and this and that and I was just so uninterested I was like what is what is a complete stranger going to tell me about myself that I don't already know you know what I mean it's like what uh, why am I ask why am I asking a complete stranger to give me some kind of wisdom that I somehow feel I don't have like that whole premise. And, you know, hands up, I was there like I 20 years ago, I was that person going to the psychics and going for the tarot reading and doing all this stuff because I was that disconnected from my own inner wisdom, I guess you could call it, or my own trust. Like I didn't trust myself. So anyway, so I'm having this conversation with this guy and he's like, what are you looking for? And then he thrusts this leaflet into my hands and it had words like transformation and clarity and inner peace. And I don't know what, I was just looking at him and I'm like, dude, I've already told you I'm not buying anything, right? And then he was like, uh, do you do you want any more? Do you want any of these? <laughs> like a menu? Do you want a burger? Do you want fries with that? I'm just looking at this menu. I'm like, I've just told you I don't. And so anyway, so I looked at him and I was like, honestly, I'm really not looking for anything. Like there's nothing I'm I'm looking for. And then he looks at me and he's like, so you have inner peace? And I'm like, yeah, do you? But then I left and I was like, that was interesting because when I said, yeah, to you, I was like squaring up to him. Like, yeah, you want a piece of me? <laughs> oh my God, it was so weird. And he was looking at me and I was looking at him. And in that moment, we both knew the other person was lying. And I knew I was lying and I knew he was lying. And that kind of bothered me because I'm like, well, I have inner peace. And I walked away from that interaction. I thought, that was weird. And then it was a while afterwards when I actually realized why it had unsettled me. Because I'm like, what is inner peace? Like, what was he asking me? Do I have inner peace? Like, that's a actually, that's such an interesting question on so many levels. Like, what the hell is inner peace? Like, what is it anyway? Like, do we even know? And, you know, hands up. I talk about inner peace all the time. You Do you want inner peace? And do you have inner peace? And this and that. But in that moment, when he asked me, do you have inner peace? And my knee-jerk reaction 
because I was getting feeling defensive about this intrusion when I'd already said I'm not buying anything and there was still this intrusion into my into my energy and this kind of gaslighting I guess you could say and but in that moment when I asked him, well, do you have inner peace? And we just stared at each other. And we're like, yeah, I have it. Do you have it? Yeah, I have it. <laughs> but I walked away like, what the hell is inner peace? Like, what's he talking about? And then I realized that that's actually a really good question to ask yourself. What do you mean when you say I'm looking for inner peace or I don't have inner peace or I do have inner peace? Like, what does that even mean? And I thought, this would be an interesting discussion to have or 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 just kind of to to have that reflection in yourself like what does it mean so for example like we would probably think oh it means being calm so does that mean you have to be calm all the time and is that even possible or natural or normal like what or does it mean a deep inner acceptance or a deep compassion for self, or deep love? Like, is inner peace actually inner love? Like, what is this word peace? Not fighting, maybe? Like, if you look at it from a war perspective, war and peace, in peacetime, we're not fighting. So that might be a really good description. Do you have inner fighting? Are you fighting yourself? Um, and then the more you dig into it, the more the more you realize... But going along to these places and trying to learn how do I get in a peace is kind of ridiculous. Like totally ridiculous. How is somebody else going to teach you not to fight with yourself if that's your definition? How is somebody else going to teach you to accept yourself? Or like, it's just, it's kind of craziness, right? Everything that you you need to do for inner peace, you you can do for yourself. Like, just if that definition is to stop fighting yourself, then just stop fighting yourself. You know, it's kind of like just stop beating yourself up, stop bullying yourself, stop gaslighting yourself. Just stop. And if that just feels like, well, I don't know how to do that, it's like just notice. So notice those times where you say, I can't do this, or I'm like that, or I'm useless at this, or I'm worthless at that. It's like, oh, I don't deserve this, or I don't. All of that stuff is you fighting yourself or bullying yourself or being mean to yourself. And if you just cut that out, what's left? Like really what's left? If you just stopped all of that inner blah, blah, you know, you're not good enough. You're not there. Like, what is that even? What, like, what is that? Why are we doing that? What's the purpose? Like, what's actually the purpose? When you beat yourself up or when you say I'm not good enough, what is, what are you trying to get out of that? Like, are you trying to bully yourself into doing something different? Are you just trying to make yourself feel bad because it, because you like it. I mean, look, what, what is it? And none of that stuff is stuff that other people can teach you. You got to just do it, right? Like, it, so I don't know. So that whole conversation, I was like, oh, that's, that's weird. But the more I reflect on it, the more I realize that actually if that's really what the sales pitch is, that, these people, these coaches, these transformation courses um, can bring you back to yourself or bring you into a deeper inner peace or what, whatever. Actually sitting down with yourself and deciding what that even means to you, like what is inner peace, like how does it look? If you had inner peace, how would you know? How would you know? Um, and so that's what I've been doing this morning. I was sitting there and I was journaling, like, what the hell am I talking about when I blather on about inner peace? What am I even saying? And for me, what I came up with was acceptance, actually, a deep, a deep and loving 
acceptance for what is what is coming out of this body, whether that is calm, that is an inner calm, or whether that is an agitation, or whether it's anger or fear or or grief or discomfort or anxiety, like whatever. There's a deep compassion for that as it comes out. Um, because actually the opposite of peace is war. And am I at war? So am I at war with myself? And if so, why? Like, what am I trying to do with that? Apart from keep myself away from a deep inner peace. Like, what else am I trying to do? If I'm at war with myself, then I am clearly not wanting inner peace. I actually want war. So what's that about? And I don't need somebody else to tell me when I'm at war with myself because I can feel it in my body, right? I can feel that that agitation in my system. I can hear it in my head, that voice that's like, you shouldn't have done that or now they're thinking this and why did you have to do this and why did you have to say that? Or I'm also at war with myself when I'm, looking at someone else thinking they're thinking this about me, they're thinking that about me. Why are they doing this to me? Why are they doing that to me? I'm also at war with myself because at that moment, they're not actually doing anything. They're probably just looking at me a bit funny or I don't know, maybe I've heard that somebody's saying something behind my back. Not that that happens anymore. Cleaned up my friendships. Not really sure that ever happened to me. I've always been blessed with quite good friendships, but you know, like people worry about all this kind of thing. I have people that come in a lot and they're just like, oh, I'm just so worried about what other people think about me. And they're just, their whole bandwidth is around what other people are thinking, what other people are doing, what other people are saying. And again, if you strip all that down, that's you at war with yourself and saying, I just want to be peaceful. I just don't want to, I don't want this drama. Well, who's creating the drama? Like you're the one creating all the drama. So just stop. And I know that that sounds like, oh, well, you can't say that, blah, blah. But at some point, we got to stop thinking that other people have the solutions for us. Because what are they going to say that's going to make it different? I mean, yeah, okay, you might learn some deep breathing exercises. You might learn to do yoga. You might learn to do meditation. All this stuff is good. I'm not saying it's not good to bring yourself and calm your nervous system so you can see more clearly. All of that stuff is good. But all of these resources, we already know. Like if you found this channel and you're listening to me, you already know all of this shit, okay? Like you've already done this till the cows come home. And ultimately, when it really comes down to it, it comes down to definition. Like start looking at some of these assumptions you're making around these throwaway phrases like inner peace, like what does that even mean to you? And once you start to, to drill down onto that, how would that look? Because my first thought when I thought inner peace was calm, I'm calm, but that's ridiculous. Like nobody on this planet, there's not a bird, there's not an animal, there's not an ocean, there's not a, a river, there's not a, there's not a cloud weather that is always 100% calm all the time. It's just not natural. It's not natural. So as human beings, it's not natural for us to flow through life without any agitation or disturbance. There's going to be disturbance. There's going to be external impacts. There's going to be thought impacts. There's going to be times where we don't feel great. That's natural. So then if you think inner peace is calm 100% of the time, you're never going to have inner peace because the moments where you don't have inner peace, you're going to be running around thinking, oh, I lost it, I lost it, as opposed to seeing that that's just a balance. It's just a natural outflowing of emotions or thoughts or actions or or responses and to stimuli, stimuli external environmental things. If someone comes at you, you're going to re respond, you're going to react to that, right? So um, really looking at that definition because that 
in that moment when I was looking at the guy and squaring up and going, yeah, I have inner peace. There was a part of me that's going, but actually you do get angry and you do get agitated and you do rant. Love a, love a good rant me, as you guys know. Um, and then I was kind of doubting. I'm like, do I have inner peace? But it was actually, I realized afterwards it was because I hadn't really looked at the definition. What does inner peace mean to me? And when I think my definition through and I realize, oh, inner peace simply means that I'm at, I'm at peace with what this body experiences. You know, I do my best not to push against it. And that's not to say I don't push against things, but that's also part of the seeing. And are, am I okay with that? Or am I at war? That's really, I mean, that's a real Byron Katie thing, actually. And it's funny because she says it a lot. Like, are you at war with yourself? And actually, the deeper I go with this whole process, the more I realize she's absolutely right. Like, that's the critical thing. Are you at war with your life, with your thoughts, with yourself, with other people? Like... War or peace, that's it. And if you feel that in general, you are able to compassionately accept what's happening, even if it's resistance, even if it's a firm no, but you're able to just see that and begin the process of looking, being willing to look, well, in my definition, you've got inner peace. <laughs> Hurrah! We can all go home now. Off you go. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's a little rant today. It's just a little rant, but I'm just, it just struck me as so interesting. I was like, oh my God, I just, I don't think I'd ever really sat down and really thought about the definition because actually the media around inner peace, that you think of Kung Fu Panda and his inner peace, and it's all about coming in and being really calm and centered and in his own. It's not like flailing around and all the rest of it, but is that really the correct definition of inner peace is it actually right and so when you're not calm when you are flustered when you are in resistance when you are angry does that mean you don't have inner peace have you lost it i don't know i mean that's something for you to think about and then in order to find it do you need to go to some dude who tells you and pay thousands of pounds so that he can tell you how you can fix yourself. <laughs> that is definitely the last expo I'm ever going to. I am so done with that. I'm just like, oh my God, you guys. It was like walking into just this pool of, <laughs> it was like this pool of people wanting your money, right? Literally everybody in the store wants your money. And then it's full of other people that want to give away their money in order to get something that will somehow make them feel like they're making some kind of progress around feeling more better, like feeling better about themselves, feeling like they're making some kind of, I don't know, difference to their resistance with who they are or what they're doing or whatever, whatever they think is going on with themselves. Lack of wisdom, lack of trust. And all of this stuff is a, it's a you problem, right? It's you having the willingness to just accept what's going on and to be okay with the resistance and to look at that resistance and to just not add anything else. Don't bully yourself. Don't be mean to yourself. Don't. It's that. And it's a slow process. And there might be processes that really help you. Like on my path, I've done lots of things. I talk about Byron Katie. I think she's amazing. At the moment, I'm doing, you know, I'm teaching CBT. I think that's very valuable as well, you know, to get the mind thinking and understanding the way it works, great. As you know, I also do yoga, I also do Reiki, clearly. 
Um, there's lots of other things I do too, but it's this whole thing that somebody else knows more than me. That's something that I think would be great to drop because nobody knows more than you about you. They might know more about you than you do around quantum physics or, you know, how to cook a beef wellington. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, they might have more knowledge than you, but they don't know more about you. They don't know what you're at war with and they don't know that they can't switch that switch to stop. Like only you can do that. Only you can decide, you know what? I am going to choose peace, not war. And I'm going to stop being at war with myself. And I'm going to stop being at war with my thoughts. And I'm going to stop being at war with my body and my aches and my pains and my illness and whatever else is going on. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to accept what's going on. And I am going to be at peace with everything that's going on. And by doing that, letting go of that resistance, then all the stuff on that leaflet he was showing me will just naturally occur. The clarity, the actual feelings of relaxation and calm and things like that, that happen or not happen, you know, who knows? But it's certainly going to happen a lot more when you're not at war, right? <laughs> if you're at war with every single thought you have and every single person that comes into your environment and every single ache and pain you have in your body, that's a lot of tension and stress and resistance. And once you drop that entire layer, then actually there's, there's just a lot more energy available as well uh, for you to get more clarity and more insight and more inner wisdom and know what to do next and blah, de blah, de blah. So this is really an inward journey. And, um, and probably you guys are <laughs> laughing at me anyway for going to these kind of places. Um, but it was interesting. It was interesting for me to go because, I, as I said, I haven't been for ages and I think this is definitely my last time. But it was really interesting because I was very in that a long time ago. So it was also interesting for me to realize, OK, I'm definitely done with that part of this journey, whatever that is, um, of seeking. You know, like that whole thing of seeking somebody else has some kind of authority over me and what I'm going through. Yeah, that's a done deal for me. Uh, hopefully it's a done deal for you or you're starting to recognize that maybe it's something you're doing and all that external outreaching, outreaching, trying to learn a new technique, trying to learn a new tool, trying to uncover this, trying to uncover that. But maybe it's not necessary. Maybe, maybe you have all the tools already and now all you need to do is use them. <laughs> what a thought. I'll leave you with that. Oh my God, inner work. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was fun. And it was fun chatting with you guys and having my little rant. As you know, I love to do. And uh, yeah, hope that was helpful and have a wonderful week. Bye. Thanks.